Hello everyone, welcome back to Demet channel for trending political stories and economic related issues and anything else that's just trending in Zambia. Make sure you follow me for all those updates and uh, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and you can also check out my channel profile and uh, choose uh, videos from the playlist that best suit your interests. With that said, let's jump right into it. So, so I have continued to believe in that and I've continued to have the integrity of accepting to say, yes, I am PF and I've dedicated my loyalty uh, to the patriotic front, despite what we are seeing today. And I've remained very objective. We want to look at the objectivity of remaining patriotic to the country, patriotic to the political party in whose faith and beliefs you have and just uh, the core values of that political party. So because of that, I feel and believe that loyalty should be able to define a man. Mm. I wrote, uh, it should have been two days ago on my Facebook page to say, uh, a time of reckoning is coming for those greedy leaders in the patriotic front who decided uh, to choose money over loyalty. And it should be, uh, it's, it's a reality actually. I've always believed that we need to be loyal to the cause. There are principles under which Michael Sata built this political party on. And those are the principles that I want to continue to live by. Have you, principles of con uh, have you attempted to have conversations with the current member of parliament for Machero and try to work things uh, for the people of Machero in benefit of your political party because you belong to, to the same political party? But then again, there's so much going on in the PF that there are three factions, and I should be asking you which faction you belong to. Well, of course, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I am one who belongs to uh, the, the faction that the Zambian people know. And that is uh, the fact that we know we had a sham uh, convention. Currently, um, we have names of the um, uh, office bearers of the registrar of societies were changed to placing Miles Sampa as president. Of course, we know the reality is the president of the Patriotic Front, who I believe is the president, um, is Edgar Lungu. And uh, of course, if names were changed as it is right now, you would say Mao Sampa is the uh, de jure president of PF. And of course, I'm informed, well informed that uh, they have decided, because of the broken down of the rule of law that we're experiencing, they have decided uh, to amend those names again to place um, Honorable Chavinga as president of uh, a third faction. But all in all, all this is intended to annihilate the Patriotic Front. But I believe the Patriotic Front is. Um, I believe the Patriotic Front uh, political party is not just an ordinary boat as the Zambian people may think, or as the UPND may think, or as um, President Hakainde Hichinema may think. The Patriotic Front, I believe, is a submarine. We may be underwater today, but it shall rise. A time of reckoning is coming. Okay, so you, you haven't responded to this. Have you had conversations with him? Well, I, I, I discussed with Honorable Samba. I discussed with Honorable Samba. We are not enemies. Um, we, we discuss and um, uh, we, we, we sit on the table. Yeah. Do you share the same ideas or vision with him? Well, I, I may have... You see, his, 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 his. President, um, I will tell you that uh, I will actually address him as President Mao Sam. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, in his world, he's president of PF. Um, and his uh, concentration, I'm sure, is no longer to the constituency. And uh, he may be, well, he's not here to try and argue, but mm -hmm. I think um, we discuss. And he believes equally that I'm forced to reckon with in the constituency. And just I am a better uh, placed, suited candidate to replace him in material constituency. Well, it's something that he can rebut if he intends to. But I know and believe that um, he's never given me any negative vibes to tell me that I, I'm not a, a suitable person to replace him okay. uh, in the constituency. What are your thoughts on the current state of governance in Zambia? And uh, how do you think this affects the average citizen? Well, currently, I would say, um, on average, we, we, we are operating below par in terms of the governance system of this country. Um, why do I say so? Uh, you know, governance, for example, requires that there are principles that have to be followed, such as uh, principles of accountability, uh, principles of um, transparency. Uh, and these are major principles that are required in governance. And now, looking at what is happening, we've got a leadership currently where the regime will claim and that there are things we are doing in the background to, in order to ensure that our economy is good, in order to ensure that our country moves forward to a certain level. But I will tell you that any leadership or any individual that will tell you that I'm doing something in the background, that leadership should never be trusted. It simply means they have failed and they don't know what is happening. Remember the bedrock of governance and good governance it requires that there should be transparency. The Zambian people need to know what you are doing. If you are going to say, you are, are doing something in the background 
but the Zambian people are not aware of what you're doing, then that requirement of a good governance uh, system uh, misses. It means you cannot really, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know, because the Zambian people need to know what you're doing. Besides, what are we running as a country? We are running the Zambian people's resources, and they need to know what is happening with their resources. So, currently, in terms of governance, the principles um, of democracy, uh, such as constitutionalism, the rule of law, which are seriously shrinking in the country, uh, the rule of law has broken down in the country and i'm going to itemize and categorize why i say the rule of law has broken down why i say our democracy is at the brink of collapse um uh, when you look at these things it will tell you to say um this government or the regime currently um is not really uh, taking care of the affairs of the country in a better way um you know in accordance with governance principles why did i say the rule of law is has broken down imagine today we have laws that are provided for how many hours or how many days an individual is supposed to be kept in custody when they are detained by the police or when they are arrested by the police. But what we've been seeing is where today as we are talking, a journalist by the name of Ziamba has been in the police uh, cells for two weeks. Two weeks. All that is against the principles of the rule of law, which has provided that the law has provided that this individual can only be in custody for 24 hours. Uh, further to this, you need to ensure that you present this individual before court, charge the individual, and ensure that they are presented before court. What we are seeing is abrogation of the rule of law. Abrogation of the rule of law that has gone to the core of abrogations of human rights of individuals. Today, we have seen the most violated human rights um, of citizens by this country and by this government. Was this any different with, with, when the people was in office? Well, I will tell you that um, uh, what is good for the goose must be good for the gander as a matter of fact however however we vote into power different political parties because we want to advance we want to improve if there were those wrongs in the pf which wrongs have been acknowledged and i saw president Lungu on several forums apologizing to the zambian people um, over the wrongs that were happening in pf and i don't think those wrongs should be tolerated today we should be able to evolve a good leadership is one that is going to say this was happening wrongly in the previous regime it was wrong now we are moving to a better place if this was happening in pf it was wrong and it can never be right today so, so are you putting it in a way that you're saying that it's broken down now shouldn't you be saying it's always been broken down no 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 and it's broken down by the I, pf and no, this, no. this hasn't this issue hasn't been fixed I, because it's already been broken we, we need to look at facts as they as they come uh -huh. um today we have seen members of parliament members of parliament being brought before court for having made a statement in the national assembly protected by parliamentary privilege um the 12 of the laws of zambia protects this member of parliament but today we'll see that a member of parliament is arrested uh, abducted and taken to the police three four days down the line not charged we've seen examples Munir Zul was uh, arrested uh, not charged after four or five days um, a lot of other mps were arrested and not charged now if we have to really uh, live up to a system that abrogates human rights without any remorse, therein lies a problem. Because Zambia is not a dictatorship. We gave ourselves a system of governance, which is a democracy. Now, Zambia is a constitutional democracy. In our constitution, we have provisions of the law uh, that guarantees our rights and protects our freedoms. We should not have this um, abrogation of constitutional provisions or human rights abrogations without justifiable means now you see these human rights that we have are inalienable you cannot separate them from me you cannot take them away from me so what we are seeing is the freedom of movement is being curtailed freedom of association is being curtailed right now as we're talking i will tell you as of yesterday we saw uh, yet another opposition uh, leader uh, joining forces with um, upnd uh, all in a bid to annihilate opposition political parties. Today, as we are talking, you've mentioned it, that the Patriotic Front appears to have three factions. All this uh, is dented with unfair treatment of the opposition by the ruling and President Hakai. Should, should be, you should be the last to talk as, PF, as far as this matter is concerned, because you also make major forces with opposition political parties. And, 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 you see, and the same political party that was signing an MOU yesterday with the European D alliance is the same party that went to bed with the pf in 2015 uh, peter i'll tell you that we need to evolve we need to evolve we cannot have a situation where 
we keep on referring to PF. I don't have a problem with referring to history. Because things but keep I, I don't the have, same way. That is where the problem is. It means we don't, we've got a leadership that does not learn from experience. You, can, you need not live into the experience of others in order for you to learn from that experience. What is happening is we've got an incorrigible uh, leadership currently. This leadership of President Hakainde Ishilema has failed to live up to the expectations of Zambians. Zambians decided um, in 2021 to get rid of PF because of the way PF was behaving, because of the Kada mentality. The Kada reason was highly um, uh, much of a threat uh, to national security and peace of Zambians. But now what we are seeing is a repeat taken. Now what we are seeing is a promax of what the PF were doing, if I should put it that way. So it should not be the case. So if this leadership wants to learn from the experiences or the mistakes of the PF, they needed to know that the wrongs that were done in PF should never be repeated. And we cannot, I mean, uh, people need to learn to, leave, to, to move on. President Hainde needs to, to move on. The opposition, I mean, the, the, the ruling today has to learn to move on. We are no longer three years down the line. Every press conference we see where the UPND wants to talk about development, they will always refer to PF. I mean, at the end of the day, the reality is that there is nothing they can point at to show that they've developed this country. Unlike the toilets that they were commissioning in Kwacha, that, that, there's nothing they can point at. You cannot compare the development of PF. Addressing issues like executive powers, electoral processes, and judicial independence. Um, well, you see, I've always had a very unpopular stance on constitutional reforms. Uh, today we have a 2016 Constitution Amendment Act Number 2, um, which I feel and believe is an act uh, which is um, okay for the Zambian people. Uh, it does not need any further amendment. And um, because I say it does not need any further amendment, uh, the reason is because this is a constitution that has not been fully tested. We have a constitution that has got provisions that have not been fully tested. What do we do? If anyone, and this is what I have kept on repeating, if anyone feels therein lies a lacuna in this constitution, they are free to take that provision that they feel has got a lacuna to the constitutional court for interpretation. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. For now, I believe the Zambian people have got a good constitution, which good constitution we gave ourselves in 2016, which constitution has not been fully tested. If anyone in this country feels and believe uh, there is need for an amendment in this constitution, it should be an amendment based on critical issues, for example, an electoral process. Which electoral process have always had a view that the best electoral process for Zambia should be proportional representation. Which electoral process was shot down in the um, in the 22, is it the Bill 10? Yes. You know, that Bill 10 had proposed for that electoral process to be amended, to have proportional representation. It was shot down. The Zambian people said, we don't need Bill 10. So, so because of that, I think we need to live by what we have. There's nothing wrong with our constitution. If anyone feels, well, they need to amend it, <laughs> let them take certain provisions to the constitutional court for interpretation, then and only then can we start talking about the failure of a provision. For now, in terms of amendments of the constitution, I don't think it's the right way to move. Secondly, looking at electoral reforms. Now, you see, we have seen a scenario in this regime, in this government, where the UPND has decided to try and institutionalize Tadarism in many government departments. Now, what we are seeing, for example, at the Electoral Commission of Zambia, is where non-PF, uh, is it UPND cadres, um, are now at the helm of controlling operations of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, to the extent of going beyond the mandate of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, wanting you to get to, the place, to wanting to get... To to it's, not, it's not rocket science that McDonald G. Penzi is a UPND cadre. It's not rocket science that uh, Mangala Zalomis is a UPND cadre. It's not rocket science. And I don't have any apologies to make over that. So, what we have seen now is where the UPND have gone on now to even abrogate constitutional provisions by introducing committees that are not constitutional to spearhead mandates of the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Very unheard of, very unconstitutional. And those are things that personally have been indicating to say we should not allow ourselves to stoop so low to the extent of allowing uh, our colleagues to abrogate constitutional provisions without uh, being told off. Imagine today there is an advisory committee created to look at electoral reforms by the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Are we saying that the Electoral Commission of Zambia cannot come up with uh, those reforms? Those are things that we need to be looking at. What mandate do these guys have? Is that constitutional? Because the mandate of the Electoral Commission of Zambia is defined in the Constitution and further defined in the Electoral Process Act. 
that is in the in the, in the electoral acts um as the case is so why should we have situations where we have a clear show that uh, this electoral commission of zambia is operating as a, a as an arm or as a department of the european government now this has not only been seen is that true well any day any time i can justify it i can justify it because we have seen uh, what has trans what transpired in kwacha and kabushi where our colleagues decided to abrogate going against a judgment of the court and that is one thing we've been talking about the rule of law has to be respected wherein there is a judgment colleagues let's respect the courts at least we need to respect the courts the judiciary should be the bedrock to protect the integrity of our democracy that is what we seek for that is all we request of our colleagues imagine we had a scenario where a registrar of societies was removed from office names of office bearers of the patriotic front were changed despite having known that these are matters before court and these matters are subjudices those acts were not only potentially contemptuous but we are contemptuous as a matter of fact by today if we had a reasonable government if we had a government that looked up to the rule of law to respect the rule of law by today this permanent secretary in the office of um, home affairs would have been in court today because whatever they did was a criminal act by today this registrar of societies who is there today the one who effected the changes of um, office bearers for the pf would have been in court because whatever they did was criminal and it was contempt it was contemptuous so this is what we are talking about colleagues we need to start respecting the fact that zambia is not a banana republic we are gov we are a government that has to be ruled by laws okay it's okay again you're speaking to systems here so what measures should you would you propose to you know strengthen institutions and promote accountability in these institutions because you're calling out certain institutions how would you do that the biggest measure that we need to do to begin with is to change the leadership we've got a leadership that feels that they are the alpha and the omega we've got a leadership that feels that they just because the constitution of the republic of zambia in, gives them the power to appoint they can decide to intimidate these systems of government now here's the thing i'll give an example the constitution have, has provided that the power to appoint comes with it the power to disappoint mm -hmm. yeah so what that simply means is as long as the president has got the power to appoint he is the one with the power to disappoint or fire so we'll have we have a system where we are supposed to have an independent judiciary as an arm of government uh, which independence is compromised by the appointment um by the appointing authority how the president will appoint the judges when it comes to the removal of the judges by the recommendation of the jcc the, the president still has the power to remove them now where the compromise comes in is where the president is still the person to appoint the jcc so therein lies the problem but now all that we ask for is integrity the people that are being appointed to this position should at least show that they've got integrity if you are being requested to do the wrong thing there's nothing wrong with saying it out into the face or the eyes of your boss and say mr president what you are telling me is unconstitutional name philip there's nothing wrong with that it's been done before and i've seen leaders who've been who put on their foot on the ground and said this i cannot do i will not do it and they've been seen as enemies i'll give an example of what transpired at the anti-corruption commission musa when they just decided to say i'm failing to operate because clearly the instruction is coming from somewhere and i think this is not right after a revelation by dr Kao. so so that shows you to say we still have men and women of integrity so in terms of the compromise in terms of the independence we what we first need is a leadership that will respect that zambia is a democracy that has got a constitution whose basis for leadership should be respect for these institutions of democracy so you, institutions of governance it's, there, which is for you, it's, it's, it's a leadership it's problem, problem. Not, it is problem. it is clearly a leadership problem and i'll give the reason why i feel it's clearly a leadership problem you uh, know today again yeah, today yeah, as yeah, a because the upnd uh, in opposition told us what well, a leadership problem uh, with the problems that we're facing under the pf and then you sit here as a member of the pf telling us now that we have a leadership problem and not a systems problem based off our failing systems why, why do you have this different opinion? It's not a different opinion per se, but I will tell you that today's failure is because of a leadership problem. It is clear in plain sight. I will tell you why I feel, for example, there's a serious failure in, the, in this leadership. Um, imagine today, the recent, when you look at it, and this is something in the public domain, the recent song that was released, for example, by the UPND, 
Yeah, there's a song that was released by the Oga family. Did you know that colleagues in that song are ZNS officers? Now, why do I say there's a leadership problem? You cannot have civil servants behaving in a manner as cadres. This government has institutionalized cadreism. A civil servant can never, can never subscribe to a, 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 a political party. A civil servant's principle is to work with the government of the day, not with the political party of the day. Not this. These colleagues sang a song. They are ZNS officers. Today we've got, and that's a, a defense, an arm of the defense force, huh? Zambia National Service. Today we've got um, a commander at the ZNS who's never made a, made a statement over that indiscipline that occurred. Because it's indiscipline, as a matter of fact. You cannot have a civil servant on top of that, a ZNS officer singing a political song. That is indiscipline of the highest level. By today as we're talking, I waited, I waited as a matter of fact, I waited for two, three weeks before I could say this. And today I'm challenging General Solochi to tell the nation why he has not disciplined those officers who have aligned themselves to a political party. That is why I'm saying we've, we've, we've institutionalized cadreism and it should never be the case. Civil servants are supposed to be respected as being non-partisan. Imagine in this government, my uncle worked for this government for 35 years with an unbroken record. But in the past three years, he was being told that you are a PF cadre. But this is a person who worked for Kawunda. This is a person who worked for uh, Frederick Chiluba. This is a person who worked for Manawasa. This is a person who worked for Arabi. This is a person who worked for Michael Sata, Edgar Lungu. And today, this is a person who's working for HH. Today, this person's integrity should be questioned that he is the PF cadre just because he's got a relation of a person who's from PF. That is totally unacceptable. I have been a civil servant before. And I understand that the creed of a civil servant is that of working with the government of the day. Political independence, extremely important. What we are seeing today is total um, institutionalization of cadreism in the systems. Total disrespect of the wills of the system. The civil service has to be respected. What we are seeing today is wrong and it has to be said out. President Hainde, you've got a challenge. The challenge is that you need to ensure that you stop this. Do not abuse our system. Do not abuse us, our, our civil service. The civil servants should not be intimidated in the way they are being intimidated. Imagine a person, just I, because I, a person... I want to ask you this. You as politicians seem to, to read from the, from the same book every time we have this conversation. When you're in opposition, you sound totally different like this can never happen But, but these are factual things. Again, when we take you back to, to, your, to the time when you were in power, would you say there was nothing of this sort happening? I will tell you something. And this is something that I'm sure made uh, this gentleman very unpopular. I don't know if uh, he's in his circles they've started talking about it. Just recently, four or five days ago, um, the minister, I mean the permanent secretary in the office um, of Ministry of Sports, Youth and Sports, um, commonly known as Pilato, Chamafum, made a statement to say, I cannot make a political comment. I am a civil servant. Do you know what that shows? This is a person who has understood that when you are a civil servant, you are not a politician. Have you heard Pilato singing songs of... You